This is a 2019 Nissan Rogue, and today we're going to be doing a CVT fluid change on it, which is a little bit of a sleeping nightmare for this make and model of car. Let me explain. Historically, you'd usually want to change your transmission fluid, and on earlier models of Nissan Rogue, it's pretty straightforward to do. You have access to the dipstick, pretty clear instructions in the manual. However, for some reason, later on models like this one have no actual dipstick, nor any instructions in the manual. Let's look in the actual engine bay here. If you look down here carefully, right here. Now, if you again, if you have an earlier model of Rogue, you actually have a dipstick here, congratulations. But those of us that have just this little end cap, it leaves it kind of a lot to beg for details on how the heck we get this done. So we're gonna focus on running this top to bottom, everything from the third party dipstick as best uh, details I've been able to piece together on how to do the service exchange on this. Um, I appreciate anyone that can also drop in comments any other further insight as it does take a little bit of a fact finding mission. Again, because none of this is available in the actual owner's manual. We have to piece it together through online message posts, service bulletins, directions to the only to the dealership. So I'm gonna take you along for the ride and hopefully by the end of this, you know how to change the CVT fluid. So the tools that we're gonna to need to succeed with this fluid swap, gratefully a lot of stuff you should have on hand already. First and foremost, we need some CVT fluid. Um, as is always the case with whenever you're especially looking at transmission fluid, specs always matter. So uh, it, it is my humble opinion, you are okay to go off brand. If you wanna play it safe, absolutely go to Nissan. They're more than happy to sell you the proper NS fluid for your transmission fluid swap. But if you do go also to your auto parts store, they can get you pointed in the right direction. Um, I do advertise this as a transmission fluid swap, a CVT fluid swap for all Nissan Rogues, but do bear in mind, the spec on fluid does change uh, for 2008 to 2013, I believe is the NS2. Everything from 2014 onward is NS3. Uh, gratefully, the, the NS3 spec is backwards compatible, as you can see in here, but just do double check that you're in the right spec for, for your fluid change. For our case, we're gonna be looking for the NS3 certification. Um, there, again, there's a lot of brands out there, just really pay close attention. Um, folks usually are pretty good about not using clever marketing, but you're looking for that compatible meets or exceeds type language to be sure you're in the right spec. There's a lot of good fluids out there, just make sure you're in spec. Uh, let's see, let's go to our socket wrenches. So we're gonna be using a 19 millimeter or a three and four quarter uh, uh, socket to get the main bolt off. Three and four quarter might be something you might have lying around. 19 is a little bit bigger on the, on the metric system, but we have a regular socket. We have our torque wrench that we'll use for putting the bolt back on and our big old breaker bar for taking it off. Um, this is where it gets a little bit more specific for our specific application. Uh, you're going to need a small a flathead screwdriver or something that has a narrow yet nice edge to it. Uh, I'll go into that. Ultimately, this is for the newer spec of Nissan Leaf. We have to take a, a very silly uh, fill cap off of the, um, uh, the neck that we'll use for checking the fluid level and filling it up. It's really annoying. You need something nice and narrow. So this is, uh, uh, it's really computer parts. Uh, so it's a five and five sixty fourths flathead screwdriver, something in the uh, type zero, type one size. So something nice and narrow, and, and we'll be going into that. Another thing too, and this is for those of us uh, unfortunate souls that have a newer Nissan Rogue, is they do not sell them with dipsticks. Why? I have a, the slightest clue. Well, I do. It's so that you do this service at the dealership. You can buy these aftermarket. Gratefully, the, um, uh, the dipstick is pretty constant for this spec of CVT, which is also used in the Ultima and, and a couple other vehicle types. I'll drop the link and, and the specific naming for the dipstick that I purchased, uh, just in case the Amazon purchase link that I drop isn't valid anymore. That way you can go find it. It's okay to use aftermarket. Dipsticks are still dipsticks, but it, it's so annoying, so annoying that you have to do this um, and, and purchase that. So you buy that. Uh, a caution to this too, do not run the CVT with the dipstick in, uh, or at least it's, it's a, I, I get mixed reviews on if you're allowed to do that. For our purposes, we're gonna play it safe. We'll just 
be inserting the dipstick, taking it out only when we're measuring, and we'll use the fill cap otherwise. Uh, let's see. Other things, you'll need a narrow funnel, a narrow necked funnel, because we're trying to get it into a tiny fill hole, so something nice and narrow, catch can, and other things. But uh, uh, again, one thing, you, if you're using a late model, you'll need to buy this dipstick as well as your CVT fluid. So how often are we supposed to be changing the CVT fluid? It's a great question that you can go to the manual. So this is just the owner's manual for our car, but you get a little bit of a mixed result. Typically, you're gonna be looking for the inspection schedule, uh, inspection and maintenance, which we'll go to that in just a sec. But before we get there, let's look at this, which is just a general rundown of some recommended uh, work. This is what, 9-6. So transmission fluid, oil, differential oil, and transfer case. Look right here. It says replace the CVT fluid every 60,000 miles or 96,000 kilometers or request the dealer to inspect the fluid deterioration data using a consult. So one would expect then 60,000 miles and it's even 20,000 if you are towing, which if you're towing, please stop. You have a CVT. You're not supposed to tow with that. Um, but... Let's look then to this, which has our rundown of belts, filters, uh, fuel filters, every, you know, it, oil filters, everything we'd expect. I's mean inspect, R's mean replace. We have to go to the next page, right here. CVT fluid. Well, that's interesting. It, it just says I the whole way, even at the 60,000 mark, even though it just said replace at 60,000. So, this is a little bit of a rub, and, and again, you can then go to, it says go to section one, which has, you know, inspect CVT deterioration every 60,000 miles, then change CVT fluid if necessary. So we have a little bit of a mixed messaging going on in here. And as we're showing throughout the video, since we also don't have a dipstick, this gives a really clear indicator that they are not really wanting you to change your CVT fluid, or at least do it at the dealer. So. If we have a recommended change interval here, it's 60,000 miles. Um, that, that's roughly in line with other transmission fluid and CVT fluid replacements. 60 to 80,000 is what you can typically see uh, in, in other vehicles. So that's all to say, if you're also behind on doing the, the change like I am, to be honest, what I'm gonna be doing is we're gonna do the initial change today and we're not gonna get all the fluid out of the transmission. That's always pretty hard to do. You have to do a really good and thorough clean. A lot of the fluid often gets into the upper housing and uh, uh, other portions of the transmission and CVT. So I'm gonna do the initial one today and then probably come back a couple weeks later once the new fluid has had time to intermix with the old. We'll do it again and we'll just gradually siphon out the old fluid to get that changed out. And the grandest question of them all, how do we get this little tab off of the end of the dipstick fuel line? If you'll take a look at this, so this is the aftermarket dipstick that we have, which actually helps show in good detail what is going on inside. Ultimately, this is all covered up on the main thing. So it takes a little bit of effort to get in there, but there's this little forked insert. So basically the, the, the tube itself has a little divot where the insert connects, gets a good lock. However, when we're covering up, hang on, sorry, let me get this in focus. When we're covering up this bit, it really begs the question, how the heck do we get this insert, this little plastic insert off? And the answer lies within. You'll see there's this little forked bit. So it's, it's just this little fork and taking our very small, this again, uh, any small inserted piece of metal. This is just, a, I, I think a type zero or type one uh, flathead screwdriver, very, very tiny and narrow. I use it for computer repair work, but we use that and we're gonna insert it. Sorry, I'm having to fight focus here. We're gonna insert it along the inside of the metal uh, connection, which I'll try to do a best details I can to shoot it. And ultimately we wanna mate it up here and then push it inward towards the dipstick or the cap. And that's what frees up this insert here and allows us to pull it off. So I'm in a place that I'm hoping you can see this best details possible. But again, we're focusing the flat head to come in here, to come in here, push in. So just the same, I'm gonna be pushing inside. You see the piece of metal there? And I'm on the inside of that pushing down and pushing in. So I'm gonna kind of wrestle with that, but I wanted to show that detail uh, and I will do my best to keep a clear vision line. It's a very persnickety little tab. So it does take a little bit of working with. You'll know it is clear as, as you actually get some give and take to that. Oh. <laughs> 
All right, that's all. We got it off. We got it off. Okay, so again, uh, here, let me grab my other top. Once more for the folks in the back, because this actually did take me a while to really figure out this. Okay, so we have our original cap here, aftermarket cap there. Both the same, same gaskets, uh, same, same physical size. It's looking good, but you'll see we have our cap there and this here. Horrible idea to having this here. It's, it's just anti-repair. It's, it's clear they don't want you to be doing this service. But we, we're inserting down this, this bit here and working to catch this right there. So it's gonna take a little bit of work, but you can do it. Just use a small uh, small piece of metal, small, small uh, flathead screwdriver, and you can eventually get to that. But with that free, we are then able to use this aftermarket dipstick that I bought off of Amazon. I have the link in the comment description and we'll use that to check our fluid levels. Okay, so for checking our fluid levels, I'm just gonna kind of snake this dipstick on in there. Actually, it does, it's a little persnickety here. Again, this has just been a really big frustrating. It's taken me a while to really get this video done because it's just, it's not obvious how to actually do this, which is really frustrating. Should be a pretty straightforward, serviceable piece for folks. Okay, so I insert it in. And if you do insert it in all the way, it will snap. Um, it's basically there, but I'll insert it in, pull it out, just check our fluid level, which we do have fluid. Um, one thing to this, and actually I, I realize I'm showing you how to do this as then um, I'm, I'm also gonna then give you specific instructions. The engine's cold right now. Anytime you have a dipstick that says hot on it, that does mean you want the engine at regular operational temperature. So that's partly why this is gonna be reading a little higher than uh, what we're expecting in terms of that. That's okay. Uh, so, you know, that's to say, if you're trying to take an accurate reading on temperature, uh, uh, be sure that your engine or your transmission are warm and at nice operating temperature. Ultimately, there, there is an ever ongoing debate on should you do this hot or cold? I'm, uh, you know, whatever floats your boat is the way I go. We're gonna be doing, we're gonna be measuring the fluid coming out on this video. So ultimately, we're gonna be able to get the exact amount of fluid back in, which is the entire point and purpose. If there is an argument for doing it hot, it is that once you have the fluid agitated up, you might be catching more contaminant, more debris, uh, which is the point of oil in the first place. And that means that will also then drain out. So if anything, if you can do it even just a little warm, it's not a bad call. Um, but if you're having to do it cold, that's okay too. To be honest, what's most important is that you're changing it because you can see this fluid is pretty dark and gray. It's not our nice uh, blue color that we're gonna be looking at when we put the new stuff in. Okay, now with our car carefully jacked up, let's go underneath and check out where we're gonna be working under here. So, those of you who are familiar with doing your engine oil changes, I actually have this uh, support light to help throw some more light on the oil pan right underneath. So, going down underneath, we have our main engine right here, and then we're gonna to look to the dead right, so that's to say the driver's left side, where you can see this oil pan here, and this is where all the action is gonna be at for our work. So, I already have my engine, or sorry, <laughs> transmission fluid catch, uh, just oil catch in place, and we have a single bolt right up top there that you can see. Uh, the bolt itself can fit about a 19 millimeter or a 3 fourths quarter drive socket. So if you have either of that, 19 millimeters is a little bit larger. 3 quarters is a, a very popular uh, drive set that might already be in your collection. Both would work on that. It is going to require a little bit more torque. Uh, ultimately, this one actually has never been taken off to the best of my knowledge. So we might be dealing with some factory uh, preset. So we're going to just take it uh, nice and easy. Leverage is our friend. So I'm going to get our big uh, breaker bar and work on that. I'll have you guys set up just in the corner. Hopefully you can get a good sight line on the action. Uh, ultimately, just talk it through. Uh, this oil pan is a little bit, it's a little bit of a curvature to it. So what I will what I might do, depending on how the drain action happens, is once I crack that open, 
I'll let the oil drain and I might actually take it off the jack stands and take it back down to a nice level position to maximize getting all the fluid out. So with that, we'll go ahead and get things started. All right, as I suspected, took a lot to, uh, didn't take a lot of force actually, but definitely has been forced on there. We'll work it a little bit more. All right, and with that, we can actually take it out by hand, which is very handy. So I'm gonna do the old bolt trick. I'm gonna be pushing up as I let this off until I feel the threads fully disengaged and then I'll let it all drop out. All right, and we are catching this. We're gonna measure the fluid as it comes off so we can get a nice exact amount coming back in. Again, you can see this looks like motor oil. It is not supposed to be this color. Uh, CBTs really take a lot of wear and tear on the transmission relative to an automatic transmission. You have a lot of that belt constantly moving and the continuous variable ratio so a lot of wear and tear going on there so it is good we're doing this well this is also draining also show a specific call out to this there is a copper washer this is a standard practice of nissan so i am going to use a copper washer going back on this uh, if you have copper washers already for your oil drain it might be the same thread size we're going to look and see but uh yeah just a heads up there too Okay, we are back under the car, and as you can see, we are done draining. I did go ahead and drop the car all the way down uh, to its normal stance position to get every last of fluid ounce of fluid out, as well as set us up for uh, uh, our next step. So I have the bolt back in place. You'll see the copper washer, which I, I turned out the same that I had on hand for the uh, motor oil changes, exact same fit, very helpful. One thing I do, I do put the copper washer on, so it's a crush washer, but to also make sure it has a good seal, you can use motor oil, the used transmission fluid or new fluid, just to get a, a little bit of a light coating. We're just looking for it to have a nice good seal. So I have our uh, a regular uh, just socket wrench here that I'm gonna use to get it initially set. Be a little bit finicky to, to get it started. And then with that in place, we're going to uh, change it up to our torque wrench. If you don't have a torque wrench, I do just recommend just wrench on it as hard as you can, get it on there good and tight. Uh, that way uh, it, it will sit nice and neat. So we'll go ahead and get wrenching. Okay, now we have all of our fluid drained out, which here, let me get a light on here. As you can see, we're looking at just about, let's see, we got three there, three quarts, four quarts. So we're at about the 3.75 quart mark. This isn't all the fluid uh, in the system, but it is, you know, in the interest of this being a drain and change rather than taking the entire lines off and really giving it a full system flush. It's what we're able to get out of it. So we're gonna go ahead and replenish our, our fluid level there uh, again just some quick just double checks make sure your bolt is on good and tight and also we'll be going back to the dipstick as we'll be filling through that port so again we'll just be uh, going back to that tutorial that i walked through setting up our funnel heads up there too you do need a narrow necked funnel uh it, any any standard funnel might even be a little bit wide but we'll go ahead and get the new fluid in and start on getting it topped back up Okay, we're back in the engine bay. I have you guys upside down looking in here. Um, so again, I'm taking my small, very small uh, flathead screwdriver, putting it on the inside of that metal bit, and then prying our fort grip in that allows us to pop this guy off. So we're gonna go ahead and set this aside. Be very careful. I already kind of half lost this. Set it aside, but recognize you're putting black on black. Uh, inside the engine bay. Okay, now we take our funnel. This funnel's gonna be in at a little bit of an angle, so I'm gonna have to really carefully um, uh, coax the fluid in. And with that, we also have our fluid ready to go. Again, on this make and model, it is an NS3 spec. However, a lot of fluids you get, NS3 is backward compatible to NS2 if you're doing an earlier 
uh, uh, fluid swap. Just be sure to really carefully read the labels. I'm using um, the Enios brand, uh, which is good, good transmission fluid. Definitely recommend it. Available at your local auto parts store, but just be sure to double check. Very carefully, we're gonna work this in. It's gonna take a while. Okay, we have three quarts in, and I'm actually gonna take a preliminary reading. I do recognize that the fluid is actually uh, not at operational temp, it's just room temperature, but I'm just more curious to see how tight a margin we have. Now that is to say, the fluid based on the readout on this guy, uh, it is recommended to do it at operational temp, so reading it hot, but I'm just you know more so curious if anything to compare it to our initial readings that we also did cold. So it's hard to see on the video here. I am seeing some sheen there. Uh, a word to the wise, that can actually sometimes just be fluid going down the neck tube uh, since we're only filling down that. So it, it, you can get a false reading. So what I'm actually probably gonna do is just let this sit for a little bit, uh, let the fluid settle down the neck tube and take another reading. Um, so that that is to say we know we're you know we might have another half ish or three quarters of a quart to go just take it nice and slow don't rush it the worst thing and and it's really not the worst thing but if you do end up overfilling that does mean you have to drop the bolt try to you know lead off some of the extra fluid in the system um but i'm just gonna let it settle gonna take another initial cold reading and then if it's feeling okay or, or you know, if I, I see that I have the margin, I'll go ahead and start topping up fluid. And then eventually, once I'm feeling I'm in a good range, which again, uh, looking at our guide here, we do, oh, sorry, man, this thing is very wobbly. Looking at our guide here, if I can get the light to settle, um, we do, you can see we have a little bit of a, a threshold there of recommended fill up. Once we're in that threshold on the cold temp, I'll start to go go ahead and start the engine, let it warm up, and then we'll really dial in uh, there. But for now, we're just gonna let it sit and we're gonna uh, read, the, read the levels uh, in just a little bit. Okay, so just as before, we're gonna add in the last quart. I've uh, been doing some couple more measurements here. I do think we have that room. Again, we took out just about three and a half liters, 3.75 quarts. So I'm just going to very carefully add in about 400 milliliters. Uh, yeah, just just try to edge it in here and see what it looks like. Okay, with our fluid all in place, we're in the car and we're going to go ahead and try to fire her up and see if we can get the action we're looking for. So I'm going to just start it up, let it... Um, you know, there, there's something to be said for let the engine warm up nice and warm. There is some heat exchange between the engine and the CVT. Let me kill the air here. But um, we're actually going to go ahead and uh, just very carefully make sure everything is working here. So first and foremost, we're start up. We're in park. It means gear is not engaged. We're just going to very carefully work through our reverse, neutral, and drive, making sure if you've never listened to your uh, transmission on, on really any vehicle, you do want to listen and feel a physical mechanical link shift. So in our case, it's going to, we're going to feel a little bit of a pulse through the, the steering wheel. It's just a little bit of a rumble and there's a little bit of a, a clicking as well. So I'm going to go drive, we felt the shutter, which is good. We're also listening for any noises to make sure that there's no immediate squealing noises. We want the shifts to feel nice and natural. We're feeling pretty good. Nothing too crazy, which is good. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first start out going in reverse, just very slowly, just letting the engine do its own power. I'm not hitting the accelerator. Cool, feeling good there. And then I'm gonna go and drive. Gonna feel that too. It's feeling good too. Okay, cool, cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'll put it in park. I'm gonna take it out for a little bit of a spin. Um, I'm gonna let the engine just do its nice warm up. Uh, I live in a neighborhood where I can just very slow roll and cruise. So I'm gonna just take it really slowly uh, on the road, not even hit the accelerator if I can, and then very, very carefully uh, apply acceleration just to make sure that uh, shifts are happening. Since the CVT, since it's two, uh, since it's two conical pulleys that are basically intertwined by our metal belt, 
uh, there's very little mechanical linkage there. So I'm going to be listening really carefully too for any whining or anything out of the norm as well. Ideally, even if you have a little bit of a, an audible whine, it could be getting new fluid in actually was the ticket. So listen really carefully, very, very slowly work through the gears. And as you bring it up to temp and are feeling okay on that, you can work that through. Next up after that, we're going to check fluid levels and make sure that uh, fluid levels are also staying nice and consistent. Once you start up and are working the transmission, a lot of the fluid is going to get circulated up into the transmission. Uh, we was talking about that earlier. That's why it's, a, it's very hard, actually, to drain perfectly drain all the fluid out. It takes multiple tries doing the approach that we're doing. So we're just going to check that level and then uh, take it from there. Okay, with test fire and test drive number one under our belt, we're, again, we are going very slowly. I wasn't even really hitting the accelerator, uh, just bringing the engine up to temp, being sure that we were going through reverse and drive. Uh, okay, I'm going to check our temps here so that we have it pretty close to uh, uh, operational temperature. What I'll also do here is with this, after this test, I'm gonna take it for another test drive. Honestly, I'll just kind of run a couple other errands uh, close nearby, not long drives, just literally a couple miles away, and then just gradually work it from there, being sure that our, our uh, fluid levels are reading okay. So with our, oop, Sorry, still proves to be a little bit of a hard, hard thing to show. <laughs> okay, let's make it stop jostling and bring it in focus. There we go. All right. So with our fluid level readout, it, it is looking like we're actually pretty much in the margin. So again, I'm going to take it out for a couple more uh, test drives here and just make sure that we're going to stay in that clear check. So with that, uh, again, if you're running into any big critical problems or other things uh, such as noises coming from your transmission or um, even a, a the fluid level continuously going down. A couple quick things there. Double check that your, well, first double check that your bolt underneath the transmission is nice and flush. I have, spe speaking from experience, where fluid was going in and seemingly disappearing and I realized it was going onto the garage floor. So double check that bolt underneath. Another uh, a tip to that, if you are getting noise coming from the transmission, stop what you're doing, uh, especially with these CVTs. They are very, very finicky, very, very sensitive. So if you get any noise, just double check your fluids instantly when you can, uh, as, as safely as you can pull over and, and work it from there. What I will also do is I will just kind of have the rest of the backup fluid in the car over the next week. That way, I'll just continuously check our, our levels and make sure we're okay. But with all that in hand, uh, just gradually work your way and you will have the correct level of CVT fluid in your vehicle. Again, appreciate you guys bearing with this one. It is a doozy of, of uh, some detail digging. It would be so nice if this was just in the manual, but unfortunately it isn't. Hopefully this is helpful. Please like and subscribe. Drop in the comments to any questions on this. I'm sure there's going to be plenty, as well as suggestions for other videos. Thanks so much for watching. Catch you guys in the next video.